In this video we're going to look at how to set up different tool numbers inside of Bobcad. Now I already have a part here with rough and a finish pass using two different tools, a half inch tool and a quarter inch tool. Now by default what Bobcad does is it renumbers the tools. You'll see that the first tool called is tool 1, the second tool called is tool 2. Now there's two different ways to address this, the first of which is to just manually edit these. Now to do this what we'll do is we'll right click milling tools and we'll go to verify tool assignment. In here we can uncheck the use automatic tool numbering, select the tool number, and then apply the change that we want. Let's say that this is tool 6, the first one, and the second one let's go ahead and call tool 7. We'll leave use automatic tool numbering unchecked, then click OK. Now when we repost the program you'll see that it called tool 6 and tool 7 as we described in the verify tool assignment. Let's go ahead and check this box again and renumber the tool so it goes back to the automatic tool numbering. And we'll post the code again. Now you can see it's gone back to tool 1 and tool 2. Now if we want to have Bobcad store the tool number and automatically assign the tool number that the tool's already sitting in the changer, what you'll need to do is set up your tool database or set up a tool with that particular number and select it. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's say that this is going to be tools let's call this tool 9 and tool 10. So what we'll do is we're going to right click milling tools and then go to tools. Now I'm using an end mill rough and an end mill finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to my end, roll, end mill rough, I'm going to add a new tool and I'm going to call this my tool 10. Half of an inch. You'll see here this is just a description or a label for the tool we could select it by and I'm just going to call this example selection. So it's tool 10 example selection. Now in here you'll see also that we have a tool number. So let's go ahead and make that 10. We'll say OK. I'm going to come back to the tool database. I forgot to do my finish tool. We'll come to our end mill finish. We'll add a new tool. And we're going to call this tool 11 end mill finish example. Now in here we'll see that we have the tool number. Let's go ahead and make this tool 11. We'll say OK. Now when we come to our feature and when we edit the feature, on the tool page, instead of using a system tool, we're going to use manual tool and then go to select tool. And here I'll be able to see there's my tool 10 example selection. We'll select that tool. That number 43 is just a system number that Bobcat assigns. You'll see here it's already filled out our tool number as well as our tool type and description. Let's go to our finish tool and we'll do the same thing. We're going to go to manual tool, select tool, and then we'll grab our tool 11 and we'll finish that example. We'll say OK, click OK again, and then recompute the tool path. So as long as if you're using manual tools that you've set up the data in, when we come over here and post the program, you'll see now this is tool 10 and tool 11. So it automatically, when you select manual tool inside of the feature, it will assign the number that you have in here. Now you can also override these settings at any point, compute your toolpath, and then post the code. And you'll see that the updates change. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're using manual tool and system tool, you really want to pick either or. You don't want a combination of the two. And one of the reasons is, is the numbering. It could try to step over itself with the same numbers. So if you want to assign your tools, you'll want to go ahead and set up your tool database and use manual tool for the tool selection and the numbers will come out accordingly. And that concludes this video.